Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. So today I'm gonna do an update on a tutorial that I did a while back and it was a tutorial about making an option selector in Patcher. Like this option selector where you have a knob on the surface and then when you move the knob you have an audio signal that will take a different path depending on what you selected on the surface. So here I have a citrus and I'm feeding the signal into fruity mutes. And these would be connected like they could they could be connected into effects or anything you want, but like for for this example, I've just connected them directly here. It it doesn't really do anything, but it's like the method that you could use if you want to make something like that. So this first example is kind of the old method, except that I have switched the fruity balance. Like I was previously using fruity balance. I've switched it to fruity mute because the fruity balance will add like something like 5 dB of gain every time you turn it on. So it's not quite ideal. Like the Fruity Mute is a lot better because it just has two states on or off and it doesn't affect the gain at all. So each of these Fruity Mutes has their own formula controller. So in the formula controller, I'm determining a specific value, like a value from this knob that each one of these is going to be turned on. So the first option is set to 0 0.25. So in this setup, it's like 0 is nothing selected. 0 0.25 is going to be the first option. 0 0.5 is going to be the second option and 0.75 is going to be the third option and finally one is the final fourth option. And also the knob is set to have only a specific amount of value. So this one, it's starting from zero and the maximum value is four. So technically in total, we have five options, but option zero is like nothing selected. Another change that I also made here is that previously I used the if function, but this is essentially the same thing, like using the equal sign. So this is just comparing the value of A. So the knob from the surface is connected to the A parameter. And then it's just comparing, is this the same, like is A equal to 0 0.25? And if it's not equal to that, it'll return zero. And if it is, it'll return one. So what the issue with this kind of a setup is and why I wanted to make this kind of an update video is that if I would change this to have four values, so from zero to three, let me just edit that real quick. So I'm just gonna go into the properties and change the maximum value to be three. Then I will also edit this one to be so that the first option should be selected when the knob is at zero. And the second option would be selected when the knob is at 0 0.333. So let me just show you real quick. So if this knob is at the kind of like the second position, if we check the value, it says 33%. And in the A knob, you can also see that it is 0 0.333. And this one is gonna be changed to 0 0.667. And the last one can just be one. So what's gonna happen now is that our first option is gonna work just fine. It's just, if A is equal to zero, it'll output one. But then in the second option, when I turn the knob into the position that it's supposed to work at, nothing happens. And the same problem is with the option three. So it's supposed to be selected, but nothing happens. So this is actually because of this rounding inconsistency. So this knob is not actually quite at this value. So if I right click and go into type in value, you can see that we have this longer decimal value. Okay, so what if I just copy this entire value? Change it here, compile. Still nothing happens. Not even when I adjust the knob. So yeah, this is the reason why I'm going to explain 
a new method in doing this. So, so the old method will work if you have these neat numbers like 100 divided in four parts. So 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75 and so on. Like those types of values will work. But if you want to have like four options in total or some other number that doesn't quite divide nicely, you're probably gonna run into this problem. So here I have my new method. So in this one, option one is still zero because with the zero value, there's not gonna be any kind of a rounding issue. Zero is just zero. So the first option is not gonna change. But in the second one, I have created this kind of an AND gate. So if you have watched my video on logic gates in Patcher or in the formula controller, you're gonna be familiar with this. I'm gonna put the video like as a card on the screen or link it in the description so you can watch that. But anyway, what I'm saying in this statement is essentially that if A is greater than 0 0.3, but also at the same time lesser than 0 0.6, so it needs to be in between these two values. In that case, this formula is going to return one because with an AND gate, which is kind of signified by multiplication, both of these need to be one in order for this formula to return one. So if one of these is false, so it's returning zero, zero times anything is always going to return zero. So both need to be one for it to be possible for this formula to return one. So now we can check if my knob is at the second position, it's gonna jump to one. And if it's something else, it's gonna be zero. I'm gonna switch to the monitor so it's easier to look at the value. And as you can see, this value will indeed be in between 0 0.3 and 0 0.6. So in this case, it doesn't really matter if there's some kind of a rounding weirdness. This gives it enough room that there can be some kind of an inconsistency and it'll still return one when it's supposed to. So here in option three, we have 0 0.6 and one. So if A is greater than 0 0.6, but also lesser than one, this will return one. So now if I set it to the third position, you can see that the output becomes one. And here in our final option, like basically the first and the last option, like at one or at zero, you don't need to do anything other than this. So just like compare, the A parameter to the value. But I also made another alternative solution to this problem. So in this example, I've used the integral part function. And what this does is that it gets the integer part of any number. So essentially it'll ignore any decimal values and only return like the whole number part of that value. So in here, I've multiplied the A with 10 to change it into 3.333, but what the integral part will then do is change it into three. So it'll just get rid of the 0.333 and only return three. And then I'm just comparing it to three. So the reason that I need to multiply by 10 is that without it, this integral part will always just return zero because all of these values are below one, like there's no integer part in them. And then here in the third option, we have the same thing, but then we're comparing it to six. So if I have the third option selected, you can see that this outputs one, just like it's supposed to. And the same thing with option two. It'll output one when we're at the option two mark. So yeah, with these new methods, there shouldn't be any issues with the rounding inconsistencies or the weird decimal values. You just kind of have to think about how you divide the knob depending on how many options you have and then determine the correct values. And with this integral part function method, you multiply by 10 and then you do the comparison based on the first value that you have right after the decimal point. 
Okay, so I hope that this made sense. And again, you can use this for any kind of application where you want an audio signal to take one path out of multiple paths and then control it using a knob or a slider. It could also be like, it can, it can be any, any controller from these, like the digits one or a knob or a slider, any, any controller that has more values than just one or zero. So yeah, thanks for watching and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more tutorial stuff. I do a lot of patcher and formula controller related tutorials. Please leave a comment and like the video if you liked it. So yeah, I will see you in the next video.